This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. Hello, hello. Local scientists are checking into getting some extra funding to help prevent large forest fires. Plus, more protests in the streets turned violent last night in the Bay Area. And police are looking for two men with a gun who fired shots outside a local fraternity. And those stories top your news right now at 4.30 Monday, uh, December 8th. Oh, it's over there. Uh, good morning. Hello. Thank goodness that weekend is over. Yeah, that was terrible. I'm using a little re reverse psychology here. <laughs> I'm John Potter. I'm Andy Guevara, and that is Jeff Martinez. Good morning, hey, everyone. Jeff. Hi, John and Andy. Yeah, it goes so fast, doesn't it, those weekends? Good morning to you. It's going to be a nice day today after a pretty nice weekend. We are in the upper 50s pretty much uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, Mid-50s on Sunday, but very nice out there. Uh, traffic moving along well, and not a lot of it at this early hour. 4.31 your time. Carson City, uh, perhaps a little bit of fog down uh, toward your area, also around the Minden area. Our temperatures out there right now are in the 30s. Not too bad, 31 degrees. And we have 23 in Lovelock, 25 for you in Fallon, 27 at South Lake Tahoe. Average high is 47. Again, yesterday we did about 55 for the high. Uh, today we'll do about the same, about 55 degrees. And we're looking pretty good for the next couple of days, but uh, all eyes are on our next storm system, which will move in by the middle part of this week, Wednesday night into Thursday. Yeah, that's what we're going to be looking at. And we're getting a little system today. It's pretty much going to stay to the north of us. But we will see some showers in the Bay Area, also up into Northern California. Some light showers happening right now. And we'll put this into motion. You kind of see that uh, throughout the day today. Just a few clouds for us, a few light showers in northern California. And the further north you go will be the better, uh, better the chance. And your forecast for today looks okay. It's kind of chilly out there this morning. 32 degrees at 8 o'clock, 48 at noon. And look for a high today of about 55 degrees with a partly sunny skies. So looking pretty good. But again, we're looking at a storm system heading our way by Wednesday night into Thursday. And it looks like a pretty good one. The mountains could see uh, some decent snow out of this. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Andy and John, back to you. Only 17 more. Not a clue what to shop for days till Christmas. Oh, gosh. It's coming All fast. right. Uh, in the news, university police are searching for two men who fired a gun at members of a college fraternity. This was early yesterday morning. All right. Take a look at our pinpoint map. We'll show you what happened. UNR police responded to the Sigma Nu fraternity house. They're on Ralston Street. It happened just after 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. Residents told police they confronted two men outside their house who were tampering with Christmas lights. That's when one of them allegedly pulled out a handgun and shot at the ground in front of the fraternity members. Now, the first guy is described as white, 5 foot 10 inches tall, about 175 pounds with long blonde hair. He has a tattoo on the inside of his right forearm. The other suspect is described only as a white man, and he was wearing a black beanie. If you know anything that can help, contact University Police at 334-COPS or Secret Witness at 322-4900. Holy cow, over Christmas lights. Also this morning, Washoe County deputies are looking for a man with a gun in the Sun Valley area this morning. Deputies were sent to the 400 block of Quartz Lane at about 1130 last night on a report of people fighting over a vehicle. A gun was fired during the argument. Deputies are now looking for the suspect, but there is no description of him at the moment. If you know anything that can help in this case, call them at 785-9276 or just call 911. And in Safety Watch this morning, scientists here in the Silver State are looking for some extra funding to help pay for an expanded early warning system that could prevent forest fires. Researchers are seeking private funding for a plan to ring the Lake Tahoe Basin with a network of cameras that would warn authorities of fires before they become disastrous. They say it works like an automated version of a manned fire lookout, which those have been used by firefighters for decades. The plan is being developed by the University of Nevada's Seismological Lab, which is also working on early warning systems for earthquakes. Meanwhile, scientists may be getting the upper hand <clears throat> on an invasive weed species that helps fuel western wildfires. Highly flammable cheatgrass has now become the most common plant in many western states. It threatens native species across many rangelands. But federal scientists say recent discoveries using fungus and bacteria may help them halt its advance. Public land managers are working on their own plans to prevent cheatgrass from growing as it begins to dominate entire basins. And looking around the nation now, a huge protest in Berkeley, California, took a destructive turn last night. Protesters on the street smashed windows, set fires. Police say businesses were looted and vandalized. In nearby Oakland, protesters flooded a highway and reportedly threw explosives at police. 
Police responded by deploying gas and arresting some of the protesters. It's the latest in a flurry of nationwide protests decrying a grand jury's decision not to indict a New York police officer who killed an unarmed man. Could have been rioting because the Oakland Raiders won. <laughs> I don't think so. All right, a uh, Senate report is coming out next week. It details the CIA's use of torture on terror suspects in the years after 9-11. Landon Miller joins us live in the newsroom now with more information on that report. Good morning, Landon. Hey, Landon. Hey, good morning, John, and good morning, Andy. This morning, there's a debate on Capitol Hill over whether this information needs to be made public. CBS News has learned that the Senate report concludes that the CIA routinely went beyond legal limits when interrogating terror suspects, including the use of waterboarding, that the techniques were not effective in getting information, and that the CIA systematically lied to itself, to the White House, to the Department of Justice, and to Congress about the effectiveness of the program in order to keep it running. Republican Congressman Mike Rogers, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, warns the report could create backlash against the United States. Our foreign partners are telling us this will cause violence and deaths. We have seen what happens when other incidents are used in the propaganda terrorist machine to incite violence. Only Democratic members of the Senate committee are signing off on the report's release. Senator Dianne Feinstein told the Los Angeles Times that the report needs to get out. In August, President Obama said he supports that release. We did a whole lot of things that were right, but we tortured some folks. We did some things that were contrary to our values. But the CIA and Republicans on the committee are expected to file rebuttals. Michael Hayden, who ran the CIA for part of the time in question, defended the agency on face the nation. But to say that we relentlessly, over an expanded period of time, lied to everyone about a program that wasn't doing any good, that beggars the imagination. And back out here in the newsroom this morning, Secretary of State John Kerry has asked Senator Feinstein to delay the report's release. But if it's not done before the newly Republican-controlled Senate takes office in January, it may not see the light of day. Coming the story live in the newsroom, Landon Miller, Channel 2 News. Interesting. All right. Thanks a lot, Landon. It's 437. Look into our community uh, this morning. Those who serve in Nevada's Air National Guard were recognized for outstanding service and reminded of how important their jobs are. The training that you all do, we know it's hard work. And we were ready at a moment's notice so that a December 7th never happens again. Thanking them for their hard work there. Yesterday, the top airmen and women in the 152nd Airlift Wing got awards based on performance of duties. Military leaders were there to personally thank them for their service and take a moment to remember the lives lost 73 years ago during Pearl Harbor. And our 22nd annual Share Your Christmas Drive-By Food Drive is just a few days away. We hope you'll make uh, help us make the holidays brighter for less fortunate families. It's happening this Friday, just a few days. 12th of December will be set up at the Grand Sierra Resort, the Governor's Mansion in Carson City, and the Carson Valley Inn in Minden. So you can stop by between 6 in the morning and 6 at night, drop off some non-perishable food. Now last year, we helped collect over 180,000 pounds of food for local food banks. We hope you'll help us beat that total this year. And this is very serious business, and, and you'll be able to tell how serious it is by our funny hats. Yeah. Uh, so. Which one are you going to wear? Probably the, uh, the antlers that... Uh, that blink. Okay, I need to go shopping. I need a funny hat too. Uh, the mine's, funnier the better. Mine's yeah. just boring Santa hat. I need funny. No, no, that, yeah, that's, you really need to flash <laughs> it up. Uh, welcome to Monday, for what it's worth. <laughs>